Good evening, good evening, good night, Facebook. Happy 11 o'clock and welcome to the 11th hour. This is our show that we do a few times a week to make sure that we're able to communicate with you, the late night entrepreneur, the person that's on the go, the business owner that's up working on your plans, your hopes, your dreams for a better tomorrow. As you prepare to go into Monday, keep in mind that tomorrow night is the second edition of the Dwayne Hirsch Masterclass. And I hope you guys saw that excellent little commercial that we got done. Shout out to Renee Costa from Blum Visual for that. It was really a great piece that really captured the spirit of the event and the spirit of those who attended the, the event. And so if you go to DwayneHirsch.com, go to Masterclass Registration, you can sign up tonight for a 50% discount by using the promo code HIRSCH50. That's HIRSCH50 in capital letters, HIRSCH50. And you can get that 50% discount for tomorrow's class which is Business Development 101, and the next Monday night class, which will be networking. Now, tomorrow night, we're gonna have our master sponsor, Attorney Shara Kamal, is gonna come out to talk about proper legal structures and how to align your business properly from the start, from a legal standpoint. And if you're already in business and doing business, then it's gonna be something where you can maybe get it back on track if you're not already on a good legal footing. From that, we're going to talk about branding. We're going to talk about marketing. We're going to talk about a process of building a business model and a revenue model that can support what you do and put you in a position to gain access to capital. So these classes are, you know, it's a lot of value there. If you're a person that came into this, particularly if you're a person that's not classically trained in business and you came about entrepreneurship through force or through just the, the, the common circumstance and the the drive that we're all getting from the world and the speed of the world that we're living in. You know, everybody comes into it, like I say, uh, in different ways and, and for different reasons. And so tonight I want to talk about the value exchange first. The, the, the title is the value exchange and the illusion of support. So whenever you have, uh, we all as consumers have needs and our needs are met by business owners. You can walk up and down the street and just get about everything you need. You can get, gas, you can get coffee, you can get your grass cut, you can get an iPhone, you can buy real estate from me, of course, Hearst Network Real Estate. You can buy socks, shoes, water, phone chargers. You buy products all day, every day, and services. And you buy them because they give you value. Those products that do not give you value, you don't buy them. If you're an, an iPhone user, you don't find value in Android, you use iPhone. You don't find value in iPhone, you use Android. So it's very simple about the idea of what creates value for you. And it's not universal to anybody. It's not about, you know, what creates value for black consumers or white consumers or whatever. Even though there are demographics that break down across your marketing channel, the idea of value is unique to every individual person. For instance, I shop at, I get my coffee every day at Sip and Saver because I find great value in it. The coffee is very good. It does what I need it to do. If I need that boost in the morning, get me up and going. If I'm get a black eye, red eye, whatever, it does that for me. And so I go to Sip and Saver, and it's just two blocks from my house. It's closer than a Starbucks. It's closer than a Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, I, I, and I can sit there. It's a cafe, so I can sit there and work if I need to. And I meet a ton of great people, man. I've, I've got an enormous value from the people that I've met at Sip and Saver. Enormous value. Hell, I should be paying trash for all the people that I've been meeting at Sip and Saver, whether it's real estate business, real estate agents that are joining, Hershey Network Real Estate, brokered by EXP Realty and kind of joining my team there. Uh, people that are aligning me with new business prospects. I'm meeting a ton of people there, so I get a lot of value for it, from it. But every, and every day I spend money there. And so Trez has a system set up to give you rewards. You know, you get reward points for your purchases. So, you know, you get a couple hundred points, you get a few cups of coffee or, you know, pastries or whatever you want uh, from the rewards. So you're getting something back for the money you spend. And to me, that's a tremendous value. So I don't speak of, you know, uh, I don't think of Trez as being somebody who I, I just go to see because he's there and that's my guy or whatever. I go there because I get tremendous value. Now, how does that tie into this issue of support? 
it ties in this way, and I really want you guys to pay attention to what I'm saying because I don't want anybody to be offended by the idea of this. We talk every day about, hey, uh, I support this person, I support that person's business. But when we talk about products like Apple, iPhone, Samsung, Nikes, and other things, we don't say we support Apple. We say we bought Apple. I bought an iPhone. I bought a Samsung. I bought a Galaxy Note, whatever they call those. I bought a MacBook Pro. You don't say I supported Apple. Why? What's the difference? What you are getting from Apple is an exchange of value. What you're getting from Samsung is an exchange of value. What you get from Starbucks is an exchange of value. But you don't say, I support Starbucks. But a lot of people, if you go to Trez, they say, I support Trez, simple and safe. As if to say that I am sacrificing something in the way of value in order to do business with this person. Now, if you drove 50 miles, not even 50, but if you drove if you drove past, if you were coffee drinking and you drove past 10 Starbucks to get to him, you might be able to say that. But if you like what it is that you get there, then that value exchange finds a way to balance itself out, especially when you can sit there, enjoy, you know, some work and meet some great people. That's an increase on the value proposition. That's the increase in value proposition that Starbucks offered from the beginning. So you didn't support them because guess what? You go into Starbucks became a value proposition to you in and of itself. Having an iPhone is a value proposition to you in and of itself because you can go in here and do things that create value. Even if that value is in, you know, the comedies of your life and, you know, the social media fun, the games, the apps is value. But you never say, I support Apple. You say, I bought it. I've done happy hour event. I've done networking events since 2009. Shout out to Fuzzy, my co-host at the very beginning and the co-builder of BSN. We did those events for free for two years straight. We brought uh, business owners in. We featured a lot of business owners. Some of you that might be on this thread tonight were featured guests at BSN or Monday Night Networking when we were at the South Loop. You all have seen the power of the advocacy work of the SBAC. You've seen us change the LLC law to help you build a business more cost effectively and build even more businesses on a cost effective level. And you've been excited about that. You've watched us now change other laws that are gonna be greatly beneficial, whether it was equity crowdfunding or this recent change to the bill we just got signed uh, to change the uh, ordinance that, or the law that deals with the Liquor Control Act of 1934. And that's another topic for another time. When you come to the Hyde Park Happy Hour, which is representative of the Small Business Advocacy Council, you come into an event for free. You come in an event with free gourmet food that is provided by Mark Buford of Lima One Capital. Shout out to you, Mark. They provide investment loans for real estate investors. And then you get to meet incredible people. You've met Kurt Summers there. You've met Kim Fox there. You've met uh, Ken Duncan there. You just met, if you were there a couple of weeks ago, uh, uh, last month, you met Fritz Kagey. You've been introduced to legislation. You've been informed on a deeper level than you're able to get face-to-face -face at any time, anywhere. Shout out Rendell Solomon. I see you on there. The League of Superwomen, what he does, a tremendous value in those events, right? But when you say to me, that you're gonna support the Hyde Park Happy Hour, I appreciate it if you come out with the genuine interest of a person who wants to learn and use the information and the, the connections that you make to advance your business and advance your life. But I want you to be very clear because this is important in how we see perspective as business owners and as consumers, the responsibility of your perspective. When you come to the Hyde Park Happy Hour, honestly, you are not supporting me. You are being supported by the sponsors who helped to make that possible, who pay for that room at a rate of $150 an hour, who pay for the food that you eat. When you come there, there's free, there's catered. Shout out to Chef Alita Williams from Loquacious Catering. 
and you get tremendous value from that. So how are you supporting me? The reason why, and I don't want you guys to think that I'm going on some rant about support, but when you think about it, if the person that's telling me really believes that, here's what the idea is. Who's doing who a favor in that process? Is Apple doing you a favor or are you doing Apple a favor? That Maybe that's why you don't speak of it as support. I bought Apple. They did me a favor because they gave me something that I can use and I can do all kinds of magical things on it. But when you come to a place where you get free food, the only thing you might have to pay for there is parking and a drink if you decide to have one. You come in and you meet political leaders, you get insight, you get connected to the Hyde Park Chamber of Commerce, people like Jonathan Swain, Wallace Good, and all those people. And you get to do that in an environment where you even meet more people from other industries in your sphere. I'm supporting you in that, and I've always supported you. The Right now, Hearst Network Real Estate, powered by EXP Realty, has been off to a very good start. Right now, I have six agents that have been recruited by me to come and work in EXP Realty and become agent owners and, and own, stock, own stock in the brokerage they represent. My stock has gone up 38% since I've been in the company from the deals that I've already closed. But guess what? I took a break from that. Not a break, but I kind of slowed down some of what I was doing in an effort to create this masterclass. So with the at the urgent, there's been people who over the years have asked me to do something kind of different and like that. But uh, recently, my girlfriend, Sharisha Purnell from the Young Women's Professional League, she was like, you know what? You really should do this. And if you do this, I'm going to help you put the whole thing together and we'll partner and team up and make this thing happen. And that's what she's done. Now, when you come to the master class, thanks to our sponsors, Shara Kamal, Dr. Solomon LeBird, uh, Mark Buford from Lima One Capital, um, Gwen Shaw, Country Financial, shout out to you all. They pay the money that it takes to put that event on. The money that you pay to get into that event, to get into that class, to help you build your future is your contribution and your investment in your own success. So I just want you to know that the events are the events are good. And if nobody buys a ticket from this point forward, my sponsors will have done their job and I will have done my job by the people who saw genuine value in that class. But by coming to that class, I want you to be clear. And if you haven't been there yet, maybe that's you know, or when you come, you'll find out why I'm saying that, that it's not you supporting me. It's me supporting you. It's me doing, going out of my way, in a sense, out of a, a path that I'm already moving on and creating a value proposition to help you gain more than what you can get from me at the Hyde Park Happy Hour. More than what you can get from me. I've done countless free meetings and advisory sessions over the years connected you. You call me and say, hey, Dwayne, I need this person. I need that person. And most time, you can always get that from me. Always. You can't deny that. But do you reciprocate that when the time comes? Do you How much value do you find just in that? When I sit down and I meet and I spend an hour of my time with someone for free, do you offer, hey, let me, now support would be this. Hey, I didn't pay you for this meeting, man. And I know you probably, you know, could use some gas money or a cup of coffee or whatever. Here, let me throw you something. That's support. Let me throw you something. Let me give you something outside of a fair exchange of value. That's what support is. It's to buttress, to hold something up. Your parents support you by paying for everything, by changing your diapers, by guiding you into adulthood. They support you. Your friends give you emotional support without exchange when they hold you in your hour of need, in your hour of grief. That's support. But when you talk to a business owner that's on the move and they're providing real value, you're not supporting nothing. I buy food at Mickey's and Lighthouse because I love the food. Rico and Mickey. Those restaurants are doing very well. They don't need me to come in there and spend $5, $10, $20, or whatever it is. Those shakes are so damn good. I'll drive 
from Bronzeville to Hyde Park or from Washington Park to Hyde Park to get that any day of the week because it's an exchange of value. And I pay them full price. I don't ask them for the hookup, buy it for less, and then claim to everybody I'm supporting you. That's not the way it is. And I think that this is a part of our perspective that has to be changed. And this is going back, even though I didn't cover this particular issue in the psychology of entrepreneurship, as an entrepreneur, I want you to get through your mind that anytime you give someone a fair exchange of value, whether it's through a barter arrangement that you both have mutually agreed on or an exchange of dollars as compensation for that, a fair exchange is never a robbery. And so you can't claim if you're buying something from me or that I'm supporting you because that gives this, this unconscious idea that it's, for lack of better words, nobody get offended. It's like welfare. Like I like you needed me to do that so that you could stay alive, so to speak. Your attendance at the Hyde Park Happy Hour is really all about you. Your attendance at the Dwayne Hirsch Masterclass is also all about you. And if you enter that class tomorrow or the following Monday for the networking class, my urgency to you is to not walk into that door thinking that you are supporting me. You need to walk in that door prepared to support yourself, to prepare, prepare to support your own need for the information that you're going to get. There are gaps in your business. There are gaps in your mentality. I want you to keep something in mind, guys. Social media is a window into the ways, the actions, and the habits, and the thoughts of everybody that's on here. And in an unconscious, addicted frenzy, you are offering the world a window into your mind every day. And advertisers are using that. And that's the reason why your timeline right now is filled with ads that are related to your to the things that you have expressed in what you post. So don't think that people can't see that and know who you really are. Don't, you know, some of you are posting pictures of all, you know, you was at the Jay-Z and the Beyonce concert. Don't send me a message saying that you wish you was at the master class because you could have been there. If it was a monetary issue anyway, it could be a scheduling issue. I'm not tripping on that. And this is not about support. We had a great class last week. We got enough people to make this class very much worthwhile. All, again, all of our costs are covered and we, we're going to be profitable at the end of this thing on the class, which is great. But if you know Dwayne Hurst, you know that my passion has always been giving you this information and in giving you a lot of that information for free over all those years. Some people just still have the idea to think, you know, hey, I support you, but you've been cashing in on my connections for nine, 10 years. You come to the event and meet all kinds of people. And I'm not standing in the middle like, hey, I need a cut out of whatever business you do, do I? I don't do that. So who's really getting the value here? Who's supporting who? So again, I wanted to offer that perspective tonight just so that as entrepreneurs, we can make that correction in the way that we see the exchanges that we have with the customers we service. And don't be afraid to tell somebody. Or So here's the thing. If you feel like what you got from me was not valuable, feel free not to come again. Feel free not to buy it again, whatever that is, right? So if, if Trez's coffee is not good, I'm not going. His coffee's got to be good for me to go there. especially. Or I'll just go somewhere else, drink coffee, and then come there, buy a donut, and kick it all day while I work. See what I mean? The value exchange has got to be there. So as an entrepreneur, you stay focused on building your value. Don't expect support from a consumer that you do not deserve and made yourself worthy of. See, as a consumer, I want to give you support here by telling you this. The fact that you tell somebody that you're supporting them gives them an unconscious sense of entitlement to that support which means that now because he feels like you have to do business with him because he's black because he's new or because he's located in this specific location now he doesn't have to live up to all of the other value propositions that he need to really have think about that this whole thing is about psychology guys from the consumer to the entrepreneur 
a lot of it, we talked really heavily last week about the psychology of conformity. And so the conformist side of this is you will sit on, on here all day on Facebook and talk about, I've seen people argue with 200 comments about the, uh, Apple or uh, Android. Blah, 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 blah. I use this. You're nothing. We got better pictures than you. Blah, blah, blah. And you don't own none of it. But now, if if when it comes to somebody else, and I, all of this is not about Trez, and this, none of this is really about him, except the fact that I just love his product, and he's at the top of my mind right now. But you don't post like that about other people's stuff. That's how you would really be supporting someone. Go out of your way and make a post about their business. Argue about Harold's and Uncle Remus on there. Like, we do that, too, and that's good. Let's, let's argue about Harold's and Uncle Remus and how they can become the McDonald's and Burger King of Black America. Let's argue about that. Let's argue Mickey's versus Five Guys on here, and you support them in that argument. That's how you support somebody, by helping to make them great. But then it's also that, th that idea that you go above and beyond. You go the extra mile to make sure that that benefit is cross-referenced to them. So in order to post about Lighthouse, you might call Rico and ask, try to send him an invoice. And I was posting all this stuff where you walk in and you expect something free because you've been posting about him, but you can't go in that store and demand nothing for free. You've been by, you could been about 10 of these for 10 years straight and five versions for the rest of your family. And you ain't getting nothing for free. And you may not even get a discount. Oh, matter of fact, no, you're going to stand in line for three days to get it. Who's supporting who guys? So you remember that. As a recap to this conversation, if you are a business owner, work to provide value that lets people know that they are not working with you or buying from you out of a sense of entitlement to you that provides a sense of entitlement to you. They are buying it because they love it, it's good, it's convenient to whatever degree, and it's something that replaces a, a, a mainstream product in their lifetime. And Sip and Saver has done that for me. So he is a great example. I'm drinking Appalachia alkaline water. Shout out Sly Townsend. This water is very good, provides value to me. I don't need Ice Mountain or uh, what's that, Smart Water and those other things that taste just as good to me. So I buy it and I'm not, so I'm not running around talking about I'm supporting Appalachia. He's got a product, I got the money to buy it and I need it, I want it. And there it is. It's a fair exchange of value. And it's not a robbery on either side. And it's not out of your way support for anybody, you know? So it's really something that we all need to consider. So that's your consideration as a business owner. As a consumer, if you're going to say that you support this person business, then I want to be posting about it. Start a, 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 a contest or an argument of some sort of debate about the value of, of, like I said, like a Mickey's versus a Five Guys, a, 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 a Truth versus Tuscany, or whatever, any any type of comparison you can start to draw and support those business owners by giving them a, a, an advanced value or an extended value in the marketplace by just your casual statement about them. Again, if you on, if you on, on there posting about your Nikes, your Jordans, and your uh, Cole Hans and this and that, you're giving them free advertising that you won't even give to the person that you claim to support. Can't do that. So on the consumer side, if it's a fair exchange of value, then you go in there and you say, hey, I bought uh, products from the Black Mall today. I went in there, I bought products from the Black Mall. I ordered products from the Black Mall. Not I supported the black mall, because when you go buy on Amazon, you don't say I supported Amazon. You say I bought on Amazon. What is the difference in that value proposition? And you should really consider the rest of your time awake tonight thinking about that. This is all psychological. And again, I hope that this conversation tonight has given you value as a reflection of the value that you'll get in the Dwayne Hirsch Masterclass on Business Development 101 this tomorrow night and then on networking the following Monday night, August 20th. That class costs $79. Each class costs $79. You can get 50% off by typing in Hirsch 50, capital letters, Hirsch 50, 
at DwayneHurst.com slash masterclass registration and come get that value. But don't call it support because it's not. And I don't need your support. I just need your fair exchange of value. So with that, always, as always, make don't make the 11th hour your last hour. It's Sunday night. So what? Tomorrow's Monday. Position yourself to have a great day tomorrow and go out and make fair exchanges with people all day of real and actual value. Thank you for listening. Peace.